All right, so today I wanna make some food for camping and hiking using my Harvest Right freeze dryer. However, in the process, I'm gonna be making some beef stroganoff, which turned out to be uh, really ideal for freeze drying. This was inspired by a friend of mine who goes hiking with his family. And when they go camping on the first night, they would like to have some pre-packaged freeze dry food so you can just rehydrate it and have a nice meal for dinner. The problem with this stuff though is that there's actually a really high level of salt in the dish, which is perfectly fine if you're actively hiking. But you know, when you're with your family, it might be a little bit more salt than you'd expect. So one way to get around this is to make your own. All right, so let's make some beef stroganoff today. All right, so the first thing we need to do is some veggie prep. I'm gonna start by chopping up one mega onion, which I'm pretty sure is about the size of two medium-sized onions. Once this onion's diced, next we need to move to our mushrooms and go ahead and slice 16 ounces or about 450 grams of mushrooms. We wanna cut them kind of big so that we have some nice, you know, really thick slices to chew into. Next, we wanna prep the beef in our beef stroganoff. For this, I'm gonna use a little over a pound or about 500 grams of some sirloin steak that I found on sale. Now coat the steak in some salt and pepper and then just cut this into strips about this size. Now one thing to note is that this was a pretty good size for a normal beef stroganoff. However, I do recommend making the strips smaller if you're gonna freeze dry it. Maybe something more close to bite-sized pieces. And now we're just ready to go. We'll just set that off to the side. And in the meantime, let's heat up the pan over medium high heat and add in a little neutral oil. After a few minutes, we think that it might be up to temperature. We can add in some test steak to see if the pan is hot enough. If it sizzles like this, then we're good to go. So just go ahead and add in some of the strips little by little. And we, we really, really, really wanna make sure that we don't overcrowd the pan here, or it's gonna leak out excess liquid and turn into a mushy puddle of goop. So for that reason, I'm gonna be working in batches and only fry about half of the steak strips at a time. After about a minute of frying on one side, you can see if you're getting a nice sear. If you are, feel free to flip it over and then begin frying on the other side. Now, once the strip steaks have taken on a nice color and they're pretty well cooked through, we can go ahead and remove the steak and move on to the other batch. Now, as you might start to notice, the bottom of the pan is starting to collect all of that caramelized steak juice and get a little dark. And this is what's known as fond and it's 100% pure flavor. So there isn't any reason to worry about it now. We'll be sure to collect all of this flavor later. So once all the steak is cooked, just go ahead and remove it into a bowl and set that off to the side for right now. Then we directly wanna dump in our onions. Now to the diced onions, we wanna add about two tablespoons of butter Butter, and once that butter is melted and the onions are ever so slightly softened, we could go ahead and dump in our mushrooms. We wanna saute these for about five minutes or until they really start to become soft. And trust me, this stuff smells incredibly good. Now at this time, I realized that this pan was a little too small for everything that was about to come. So I quickly transferred the mushrooms and onions into a bowl so that I could transfer it to a larger cooking vessel later. In the meantime, we didn't really didn't wanna lose that delicious fond that I spoke of earlier. So I used a little white wine to deglaze the pan, but you can just use water if you want to. Essentially what we're doing is we're just removing that fond that has collected on the bottom of the pan. I just poured that stuff, which is just 100% flavor town, into my mushrooms and onions. Then I poured the delicious onions and mushrooms into a big enough pot, which is an enameled Dutch oven. And I just began to cook this again. And I really should have just used the Dutch oven to begin with, now I have extra dishes to clean up. All right, now at this point, we can add in one fourth cup of all-purpose flour, and this will help thicken up everything later and create a texture for the sauce. But to get rid of that raw flour taste, we need to cook this flour with the onions and mushrooms for about 90 seconds. After that 90 seconds is up, we wanna stop cooking, so we wanna add in some liquid, and I'm gonna be using one and a half cups of beef broth, but at first, we wanna just add in about half a cup, just a little bit of the liquid, and during this time, we're gonna make sure we scrape up all of that flour that's kinda of clung to the bottom of the pan. At first, it will look kinda of gnarly, and maybe like you've burnt something, but as the starch in the flour gelatinizes, it will dissolve into the broth and the whole thing will become a lot smoother. At this point, go ahead and add in the rest of the broth and just keep stirring until it kind of becomes, you know, smooth. Now, honestly, this is a lot of broth and we're gonna have to cook this down to kind of reduce this a little bit to kind of get a thicker sauce like I like it. And the idea here is what we're doing is we're really trying to concentrate that beefy flavor in the broth. Now, I let mine reduce for about 10 minutes and I kind of got to this thickness. Now, at this point, go ahead and turn the heat down and add in about one and a half cups of sour cream and give it a stir. At first, it won't come together too well. Just give it a chance though and keep mixing and eventually it will just magically start to look correct. At this point, we can add our beef back in along with any accumulated juices. And lastly, we want to add a few healthy dashes of Worcestershire sauce uh, and complamo. We're ready for a good noodling. Add in three cups of cooked noodles, which is one full 12 ounce or 350 gram bag of egg noodles. I just had those cooking off camera. These are just egg noodles. Um, I did add a little butter so they didn't stick to each other. And normally I would have plated the noodles and then ladled the sauce over the top. But today I'm just going to toss everything into the pot and kind of mix it together. Now, if you're just trying to make dinner, you can go ahead and stop here and guten appetit. 
However, if you want to freeze dry this, all you need to do is place them into a freeze dryer tray, trying to get somewhat of an even layer of the noodles and sauce. Uh, you want to just start the freeze dryer and once it's ready to load the trays, just go ahead and put the trays into the freeze dryer, close the chamber, and let it go. I think the real beauty of the Harvest Right freeze dryer is that it's just extremely easy to use. It's just, you know, you really don't have to do anything. So just, so the next day after it was done, I just pulled the beef stroganoff out of the freeze dryer and it looked like this. Uh, it totally looks kind of strange, but it's actually kind of addictive in this state. Uh, I, for funsies, I ate a few of them just kind of on a lark and they were really kind of almost like delicious beefy potato chips. Um, but that's not what we're trying to do here. We want to make them so that we can take them camping. Go ahead and grab some Mylar bags, label them with the date and what's inside, and then we can just ladle our noodles into the bag and just kind of fill up the Mylar bag. Place an oxygen absorber into them and then we just need to seal them up. And as long as they're sealed up with an oxygen absorber, these things should be shelf stable for uh, a good long while. And I thing is that the freeze drying process really removes all of the water. So these things are actually super lightweight now. Now if you were to go camping, all you would need to do is just add some hot water and just give them a mix in the bag and you just want to add enough hot water to kind of rehydrate them. And honestly, you can just eat directly out of the bag. So, you know, you can just really bring these things along with you and then you have some nice kind of camping food. And the real benefit of this is that, you know, if you're cooking your own food, you can really tune this recipe to accommodate somebody with an allergy or food preference. And so, I mean, it's kind of a really nice way of actually being able to create camping food, but also camping food that you can, you know, give to people, especially those with picky diets, like for example, maybe children. All right, so that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed this video. There are more videos incoming soon and thank you for watching. All right, bye.